Welcome to a, another international ministry mini sermon slash documentary. This falls under the category of documentary because it's information as well as a Bible study. But first, I want to read out of 2 Kings chapter 20, verses 2 through 6. And of course, I'm reading out of the King James Version, as always. And we'll be starting at verse 2. And the word says, Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and in perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone into the middle court, that the Lord of the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, The God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayers, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I have I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. So as we can see here, Hezekiah was on his deathbed. Keep in mind, Isaiah just had visited him by word of the Lord, saying that the Lord will acquire, require the, the soul of Hezekiah within a couple of days of Isaiah's visit. And what did Hezekiah do? Hezekiah sent everybody out of the, the chamber and turned and humbled himself and faced the wall. And he prayed to God and he asked God to give him more time and to remember what he has done that has pleased the Lord. And for the Lord to forgive him for the things that did not please the Lord. See, today we have just as much of this going on. And we have to keep in mind that when we ask of something, we have to believe that God will do it. We have to believe that God will protect us. And that was Hezekiah's downfall before he was on his deathbed was the king of Assyria had just died. So Hezekiah took it upon himself to stand against the king of Assyria. Now the king of the acting king of Assyria had sent messengers to King Hezekiah telling him that he, he stood no chance not to believe the prophets of his God, Yahweh. That the king, the king of Assyria and the Assyrians have defeated so many kingdoms and their gods. And what makes Hezekiah think that him and his people have a God 
that's stronger than all of these other kingdoms, gods. And Hezekiah shuddered. Hezekiah backed down. And he offered gold from the temple to the king of Assyria for protection and in hope that the Assyrians would turn back and go the other way. And that was disbelief. We all suffer from disbelief in our world these days. We don't believe that Jesus heals today. We don't believe that Jesus protects his own. We want to trust other things. We want to trust other people, secular people, people that don't even know Jesus. Yet they come to us with their philosophies and their worldly wisdom, and they want to steer us away from what God wants us to do. In other words, they try to discourage us and send us in railing in disbelief like they like they live in. They live in a realm of disbelief. They live in a realm of godliness. And yet when somebody that is a believer comes with belief, they're mocked. They're mocked by the world. And we're having that go on daily these days. It never ends. So King Hezekiah backed down from the Assyrians out of fear. And as we know, the Bible says, uh, Fear is the root of unbelief. So the thing is, is we have to believe that God's going to protect us. We're going to have to believe. And I suffer from certain things as well. I know that God will protect me. But sometimes I want to go my own way. Sometimes we all want to go and do it our way because we think our way is what's best for us. And that's what Hezekiah did. He thought that he had Israel's best interest at heart up to the point to where he was willing to give up things in the temple that were holy and sacred to God. And that was the sin that he committed was unbelief. So years, years on down the line, Hezekiah is on his deathbed and the Lord sends Isaiah in to tell him, King Hezekiah, that the Lord acquired of his soul that day. That the Lord acquired his soul. And Hezekiah was scared. He was scared because he knew that he was not ready to face the God of Israel, the Lord God of Almighty, Yahweh. He knew that he couldn't face the Lord in disbelief. So after Isaiah had walked away, Isaiah hadn't got all the way out of the courtyard yet. And Hezekiah humbled himself before the Lord, turned and faced the wall, and prayed the most humbling prayer he had probably ever prayed his entire life. And God heard his prayer. He was in belief at the moment. Sometimes it takes a tragic situation for God to show us that we have to believe in him. We have to trust him with all of our minds, souls, and understanding. We have to let him know, and ourselves know, that we believe. So the Lord turned Isaiah back around, and Isaiah entered back into the, into the king's chambers and, and told Hezekiah that the Lord said, 
that he would give him 15 more years added on to his life. Now that is blessing. That is belief. And Hezekiah repented and did what the Lord wanted him to do. And in his belief, the Lord promised that he would deliver Israel out of the hands of Assyria. Who are the Assyrians? Well, they're still here today. They're still here today. ISIS, the original ISIS members, they're Assyrians. They're just called by a different name. They're just called by a different kingdom. But the ultimate kingdom that they follow is still the same satanic Satan realm that they still obey and that they still want to conquer the world because that's who they are. That's what they want to do and that's what they will do. So we need to believe that God is here. God does not tell us anywhere in the Bible to fear our enemies. He says to respect and to love and to pray for our enemies, but he never says anywhere for us to fear our enemies. Our enemies are anyone that is the enemy of God. And the Bible tells us that the world is the enemy of God. So we need to de de detour from the world and to obey God and to do what God wants us to do. We need to humble ourselves and we need to pray. This goes for us Americans. This goes for India. This goes for Africa. Every continent in the, in the world has to humble themselves. And then you have these people that don't believe. And it baffles most of our minds to wonder how somebody could be in such belief. However, we're guilty of the same things. You know, we, we don't believe that God will do this. We don't believe that God will do that. We want to do things the way we want to do things. So, let's keep that in mind as we go through the rest of this week pray humbly pray get in your prayer closet and trust in the Lord ask the Lord to deliver you ask the Lord to lead you on the path that he would have you go and trust him to lead you there don't go out on your own is dangerous out there. Trust in Jesus. Jesus is there to deliver you. I thank you all for listening. I'd like to say a little prayer. If everybody would bow their head. Father in heaven, we glorify your name and we thank you for your protection and your strength. We ask you, Lord, to humble us and to teach us and to show us your ways and your path. Show us which way to go and which way you want to lead us and give us the strength to believe. Give us a double portion of your faith so that we may believe without any doubt that you are there in our time of need and we will follow your ways. We will follow you. In the name of Jesus, I pray this on us now. I pray the strength of Jesus. Through Jesus, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I pray that you all have a blessed day. Visit our website today at www.internationalministry.org I thank you all for listening and this has been Pastor James. Have a blessed and wonderful week. Amen.